Hello everyone, it's Jim from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in tube lab number 13, we're going to learn how to identify tubes made by Philips. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, this is a huge topic and no one single person is going to have all the answers. I'm going to share some of what I know, and if you're just starting out in tubes, consider this a primer. Feel free to add your own tips to the comment section at the very bottom. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like button and subscribe. Some of the world's largest and best tube manufacturers were located in Europe. Mullard, founded in 1920 in the UK, was by 1927 fully owned by the Dutch electronics giant Philips. Philips was the equivalent of RCA in the US. They designed tubes, manufactured them, and then built much of the electronic components they went into. Philips manufactured under many different brand names, including Amperex in the US, Valvo in Germany, Radio Technique in France, and of course, Mullard in the UK. Your best resource for identifying the source manufacturing plant for many European tubes is the etched factory codes located on the lower shoulder of many tubes. Let's focus in on... There we go. So we've got a delta, that's the upright triangle, that's the delta symbol, 2E5. And we'll get into how to identify those codes in a minute. If you only have one line of code, then you have the plant and date. If you're lucky and have two lines, then you also have the tube type identified. Here are two guides that combined will help you sort all of this out. And I've put a link below for both of them. A big thank you to Steve at Mullard Magic and Frank at Frank's Electron Tube Data Sheets for putting those up on the net. One thing to be aware of is the rarer, more in demand a tube, the higher the chance that it will be faked. Now these came in with a bunch of 6SN7s from a trusted wholesaler that I buy quite a few tubes from. I don't think that they knew that these were fake, at least I hope not. And Mullard, of course, never made a 6SN7, but they did make a mil-spec version, the 5692. Now, I didn't have any in stock to look at. In fact, I've never had a 5692. But any time you get a vintage tube in, in which it doesn't come in a, an authentic-looking box, and boxes are faked, folks, as well, and it comes in with really good print. Your spotty scent should be tingling. That's a really good indicator you may have a fake. Now this one got past me, but in a previous tube lab, two maze caught this. Now, I did my research online because I don't have an example of this, and I couldn't get a good picture of the getter. And that's common. If it's a bottom getter, you rarely will get a picture online. And there you see that circular Getter, that's called a flying saucer. Now that is unique to Russian tubes. Many Russian tubes use that flying saucer shape. Not all of them, but it's unique to Russian tubes. Ah, you say those Russians. Yes. So, now, is this a reissue or is it a fake? If it had said made in Russia down here, we could say legitimately this is a reissue. Even if it's nothing like the original tube. You could say it's a bad reissue. But in this case, this was a deliberate attempt at a fake. Now, I actually have many of these tubes in stock. This is an NEVZ 6SN7 GTB Russian equivalent. And they're actually nice sounding tubes, but it's not a Mullard 5692. So, shame on them. Okay, what's next? We've got a Philips Miniwatt 
E80CC, also known as an amazing 12AU sub, maybe. And I say maybe uh, because the heater current is exactly twice what a 12AU7 is. 12AU7 is 300 millivolts, and this tube is 600 millivolts. And in a future tube lab, we're actually going to talk just about this, this tube. I'm just waiting for some inventory to come in so I have a good selection to review. And it's going to be a fabulous episode. So this is SQ, special quality. And in this tube, that means gold pins. Most of the print is gone, but we do have a coat. So what does that say? That is a Delta 4D3. So let's do one completely from the beginning. So let's get out our guide. The Delta at the beginning, the first symbol is the plant. Let's see if you can see that upright night right angle triangle, that's a delta symbol. Phillips Heerlin, so that's your manufacturer first, and then Heerlin is the plant, and that's Heerlin in Holland. Okay, what else did we have? We had 4D3, so 4 is the digit of the decade, so that could be 1964 or 1974, and the D is just the month, so that's April, and the three is the week. So third week of April, 1964 or 74. Okay, easy. Up next, we've got a Mullard ECC 83 or 12AX7. Almost all the print's gone. All that we've got that's intact that was a little better embossed is made in Great Britain. So that gives us a hint that that is um, a tube made in the UK. But we've got a shoulder code. Now this is a three-letter code. That means it's pre-1960. Four-letter codes are post-1960. And this one is a capital B, eight, small k. So capital B meant Blackburn. So we, when you see Blackburn, you know that's Blackburn Mullard. The eight is 1958, and the k should be November. Now hopefully I got that date code right. I normally work in post-1960 Mullards. Next, we've got a Phillips 12AX7 ECC83. And it's got nothing left on it except the tube designation and faint. You can see the 12AX7. And it's got etched Holland. And that's actually fairly common with Phillips tubes. Not in every tube. But that's a good indicator that we've got a Phillips tube, and of course we've got a, a code on the shoulder here. And that code is Delta 5K4. So the Delta is Heerlin. 5 is 1965 or 75. The K is November, and the 4 is the fourth week. Okay, next, we've got a lovely tube, a Phillips Amperex Bugle Boy, a 60J8 or E88CC. And this one, we're in luck. A lot of the print is still intact. You can sort of see what type of tube it is on top here. And you can just see the caricature of the tube boy blowing his bugle. Now, Amperex is famous for poor print quality on their tubes, not for poor quality tubes. Don't confuse that. But the print just, it just didn't last. It's not a sign of a defect in the actual tube or the amount of use it's received. The print just literally fell off of these tubes as they got older. But luckily we do have a code on the shoulder. And what does that one say? That's a Delta 5A4. So Heerlin, 1965 or 75. A is January and 4 is the fourth week. Okay, here's another nice, nice tube. This is a Phillips E88CC gold pin. Now all that really was on here is this designation, so it's probably an industrial tube bought in a lot. So not sold to the public. It's got a large upper halo getter and the unique um, structure of this tube type. And gold pin. So we know that that's probably a special quality tube. Not always does that Gold pins indicate that, but in most cases it does. But we've got a code. And that is a Delta 8 I5. So here and again, 1968 or 78, and the fifth week of September. 
Okay, let's do something different. This is a Valvo ECL86. Now, Valvo, uh, even though it was a division of Philips, had very good quality print, and in many cases it stays intact. So, that's kudos to the, the, German, the German manufacturing. And this tube has got two lines of code. Let's see if we can focus in on that. There you go. So that first line says WS7, and the second is D3E4. So let's get out our other guy. This is where this comes in handy. So what is a WS7? That's the tube type. And there we go, WS, that's an ECL86. Bang on. Okay, the D3E4, the capital D equals Valvo Hamburg, Germany. The 3 equals either 1963 or 73, and the E4 is the fourth week of May. Okay, last up is a rebrand. This is actually a Philips 6DJ8 ECC88. Now it's rebranded by HP, Hewlett, Packard. Much of the writing is intact on this tube. Now HP uh, was a huge US electronics manufacturer and they're still in business today. They build high-speed printers. Now the only other thing on here is made in Holland. Now every piece of equipment that HP sold as far as I know they had rebranded and if we didn't have that code we may not know for sure what this tube was but we've got the code and that is Delta 2 E5. So here then again, 1962, 72, or even possibly 1982, if the plant was still open in 82. Now I've done some research and I can't figure out when the Hero plant closed. If anybody knows, please let me know. Let everyone know. That'll be useful and put it down in the comments. So how did it determine which decade? Well, if you've got the box, you might have a packed on date. Here is a very late Philips Sylvania 12AT7WC, a mil spec tube, and look at the bottom here. We've got 288, so it was, it was packed. The A means accepted, I believe, because it's a military tube, and they get accepted into inventory on the military side. So February 88, it was packed. So most likely this tube was made in 1987 or very early 1988. But if you don't have the box, and in most cases, even new old stock vintage tubes, we won't have a box. What else can you do? Well, often manufacturers had variants that are particular to a certain decade. So an online search may help in determining this. And the logo, if intact, may also help. Older style logos are earlier, and newer style logos are obviously later. But sometimes you won't know for certain. And if you want to sell the tube, be honest. If you aren't certain, say so. That way you can't get into trouble. And let's face it, if you've got a nice Blackburn Mullard ECC83 or 12AX7, and you aren't certain whether it's a 64 or 74, you still have a nice Blackburn Mullard. Well, that was fun. And if you watch till the end, here are some discount codes. Feel free to use them as often as you want. And remember, it's $20 flat rate shipping globally. And if your order is $150 or more after discount, shipping is free. This is Jim from Valsenmore signing off. Cheers, everyone.